This is uh, Bible Truth. Good morning. So, um, <clears throat> Saints, I want to cover something. I, I, def I want to keep covering this because I, um, it was definitely, um, before I believed the gospel, it was definitely a stumbling block for me. Um, it's amazing how people can hold the same book in their hand, but completely see different things in that very same book. That the, the, the lens in which you interpret the Bible uh, can be very skewed uh, based on essentially your heart, whether you have faith or not. And um, based on that interpretation, you can definitely obviously misrepresent who God is. And so what I want to do is I want to um, show you how, you know, there are certain interpretations that lend themselves to perverting who God is. And giving men, quote unquote, an excuse, even though the Bible says essentially men are without excuse. Because even if someone was to go and misinterpret the Bible, the very fact that the person who's listening to that person say that's not right, well, that's their conscious bearing witness. That if they know that's not right, then they know that that can't be the true God of the Bible. And essentially, if they themselves being us, all of us being sinners who've fallen short of the glory of God. Our conscience is bearing witness against us because that that we used to accuse others, those things typically we've done. And the Bible says, based on the standard of the law, which is a schoolmaster leads unto Christ, it says no one will be justified. But the fact that we understand that something is, quote, wrong or a sin, and can clearly see it when others do it to us. He says, then why do we then make excuses for when we do the same thing? And so God raises the standard of the law and says, if you offended one part, you've offended all parts of the law. And by the law shall no flesh be justified in his sight. Hence the woman caught in adultery when they dragged her out and said, yep, she was caught in the very act. And he said, let he that among you who is without sin cast the first stone. Right? All men are already condemned because they believe not, given that the sacrifice, the blood sacrifice was made for all men according to the law. Without remission of blood, there's no forgiveness of sin. So now the sin is not because you don't keep the law, because God is saying, look, that law just reveals that you're a sinner. And if you keep looking at that law, your sin will become exceedingly sinful because it will just reveal just how deep and how much of a sinner you are, as Paul said, who called himself a chief sinner. So by that, you should use that law to say, you know, if it's by the law, I'm not going to make it. And not only am I not going to make it, no man's going to make it. And hence, what must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and I shall be saved. Okay? So, um, this thing is called reasonable faith. And it's it's just the irony of it all, guys, is just it, it does it never it never ceases to amaze, the irony, right? So a lot of these people, you gotta understand that uh, the Bible has been this book that people have been using and abusing and trying to pervert the word of God so that they can profit in this world. And if you just believe the simple things like my kingdom is not of this world, the children of the flesh are not the children of God. God is the spirit and those that worship him must be worshiped in the spirit and truth. And Nicodemus, you must be born again. Not of corruptible seed, meaning not of the flesh, not of blood, but of the incorruptible seed by the word of God that liveth and abideth forever. My sheep never perish. If it perishes, it's not my sheep. Okay? So um, with that, I'm going to go ahead and play this game for reasonable faith. You'll kind of get the gist of what I'm talking about here. Who do charge God with the very thing that you said he can't do, which is give an immoral command. When in the message today, uh, Paul was talking about Joshua, where they were commanded to commit genocide, yes. basically, against the people. Well, they were commanded to wipe out everything in the within the city walls of Jericho. And the objection that I hear about this divine moral command is you have the Old Testament replete with such commands where... They were to slaughter every living thing, child, uh -huh. woman, pet, 
whatever. So yes. what is the response then to, to that? If you look on our website, reasonablefaith.org, I have a, a couple of questions of the week where I wrestle with this issue. And um, what I try to do there is to defend an ethical theory that would allow God to be perfectly good and all-powerful, and yet to issue these sorts of uh, horrifying commands, such as to go in and, and kill everyone in the city, uh, men, women, and children. And I think that the um, so theory that... go in... You got to be. Here's the thing: you should beware of the theologian, guys. <laughs> beware of the theologian. He said, "I have tried to." You notice the "I have tried to." There's no like, well, you know, the Bible doesn't contradict. There does seem to be an issue here with this interpretation because um, that that seems to misrepresent the character of God. So I tried to reconcile this using the scriptures. No. He says he come. He thought about a theory that allows him to. And so, beware of the theologian, okay? Beware of the theologian. Um, let's keep going. That I've laid out here allows us to understand that, because if God is the source of our moral duties, that means that God could command a person to do something which in the absence of a divine command would have been sin. But given the divine command, it now becomes the right thing for that person to do. So if the armies of... So he's basically saying that light can become darkness and darkness become light. He's saying, well, anything that technically would be a sin, if God commands it, then therefore it's not a sin. So let's take that as an example. Rape is a sin. But if God commands it, then it's not a sin. So you have to now presume that God can command rape. And that if you're going to go and say God's commanding us to do the things that he says that we shouldn't do, then what would that mean? That means God's a contradiction and it's against his own self. But to prevent that from being a contradiction, God then just simply changes his own law. And says, well, since I said to do it, do as I say, not as I do. Essentially is what he's saying. Therefore, making God the biggest hypocrite. That essentially is what he's saying. Um, let's keep on going. Of Israel, for example, had just decided on their own to go in there and slaughter the people. That would have been wrong. It would have been, say, murder or war crimes. But given a divine command, they now have a moral duty to do that, and um, therefore they have the they have the obligation to to carry out that command, horrifying as it might be. Now, you got to admit, now this guy in his own mind, he's saying as horrifying as that might be. So he himself is saying, "Yeah, this is." Uh, <laughs> he's like, "This is." Yeah, I, I think it's you know. It's horrifying, but this his theory now. This is his theory. The divine command theory that I've conjured up allows me to explain to those who buy into the, the misinterpretation of the Bible. It allows me to um, somehow assuage or defend pretty much the indefensible. I thought in my mind, I've thought of it, and this is what people are supposed to buy. Okay? According to him, it's the divine command theory. that it, Something that ordinarily would be wrong. Think about it. Murder, theft, you know, I guess God could just say worship other gods and be like, well, I, I actually commanded you to worship other gods, so since I said to do it, it's not a sin. Right? You know, let's look at the let's look at the commandments. What's the first what's the first commandment? So his divine theory that he he can actually deny himself. <laughs> That's his divine theory, right? So God doesn't have the ability to command a person to sin, but he has the ability to command a person to do an action which 
in the absence of a divine command, would have been sin. Now, this this is what I'm saying. Beware. This guy has a course of master's degree. He's a rabbi. He, he deems himself a rabbi. Don't fall for the lie of people putting on costumes and saying, oh, no, no, rabbi, ra a rabbi is a Gentile. A Gentile is anybody who doesn't believe. Let's just put it that way. Anyone who does not believe is a Gentile. A Gentile is a heathen and a pagan. So when this man speaks, he speaks as a Gentile and a pagan. Anybody who is not born again is a Gentile. Period. That's the Bible says we are the circumcision which worship God in spirit and put no confidence in the flesh. No one can, should count their flesh as being a child of God because the children of the flesh are not the children of God. Remember that. Okay. So what he is saying in his in his pagan way is he's saying basically he just said sin isn't sin because if God says it, what would typically what would be a sin all of a sudden becomes not a sin. And so since we know that God can't sin, well, when God says it, it then ceases to be sin. Even though it goes contrary to what God has said. So basically, what has he done with the whole Bible? What has he done with the whole word of God at this point in the mind of anybody who's listening to him? I mean, anybody who wants to believe this. He's given them an excuse. Now, don't get me wrong. They're, they're without excuse. But what I'm saying, he's given them an excuse. And that's what they do. These are these teachers. They heap up on themselves. Teachers, they're having itching ears, and they want to hear these things, and they want an excuse. So this guy comes. He is basically the judgment. These horrible pastors are like a, like a, like a horrible judgment because these are guys who, they give these people what they want. It says, okay, you've hardened your heart. Well, here, I will send this teacher. And does he look like he's a... In his warrior gear? Is his weapon are his weapons carnal? Or is he just speaking from the heart using his words? And what spirit is in him? Doesn't look like warfare now, does it? But it is. Now, the question then is, is it incompatible with God's nature as an all loving, compassionate being? to issue such a command. And I would say, in this case, no, because these Canaanite tribes that God commanded the armies of Israel to drive out of the land, and those who tried to remain behind and fight were to be exterminated, were incredibly wicked. Uh, for 400 years, the Bible says God had stayed his hand of judgment upon these Canaanite tribes because he says to Abraham, the iniquity of the Canaanites is not yet complete. So he allowed his people Israel to languish for four centuries in Egypt until the iniquity of these Canaanite tribes became so ripe for judgment that God then used the armies of Israel as his means of visiting judgment upon these peoples for their wickedness. So he did nothing unjust in commanding the extermination of the adults, at least, in these Canaanite tribes. So let's understand it. So what is the judgment, guys? What is the judgment? This is a condemnation that light is coming to the world and men love darkness rather than light. That if Christ died for our sins, he was buried, he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. If he died for all men, then that law is just a schoolmaster to lead us unto Christ. But once we come to what must I do to be saved? Faith. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. The judgment is what? Of sin because you believe not on me. And when you believe, you're no longer condemned because you're a new creature created in Christ. And God's not judging himself because you're found in him having not your own righteousness. Because there's no condemnation, no judgment to those who are in Christ. Jesus who walked not after the what? Flesh, but after the spirit. God's not judging those who are his people. He's not judging those who are, he's not judging or condemning his own kingdom. And since salvation is found in him, and Isaiah 45 says, Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. You shall not be ashamed nor confounded. The world will not end. Then God's not judging himself because of 
house divided against itself cannot what? Stand. So he's not talking about carnal warfare. When he's talking about their sin not being complete, well, if you harden your heart, that's it. Your house is left unto you desolate. And at some point, if you keep hardening your heart and harden your heart, that's it. That's why it says today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Okay? So in the Bible, in Isaiah 48, 58, 1, I say, it says here on the right, cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. Now, when we say you and I, those of us who are born again, we're no longer considered children of the flesh. So if we were to say, show my people, right, their transgression, what is that talking about? That's talking about our old man going out and telling the people who are our people according to the flesh, even though you and I are born again, show them their transgression. Because the people, children of the flesh, these are all brothers and sisters, everybody descended from Adam and Eve, according to the flesh. And so we are to show them that they must be what? Born again, a new creature, because they're no longer related to us in any form or fashion, in any way. They're not related to us according to the spirit, because the children of the flesh, these are not children of God. So when we appear to them, we go to them. They see our old man. They see the outward appearance. They see the sinful creature. And we're to show them, preach the word in season and out of season, what our light. Show them the truth. We're to go out and teach what all nations. And so it's what are doing that by the word. And the reason we're using the word is because we're there to destroy an enemy. And the enemy that we're there to destroy is who? Death. Death is the enemy that must be destroyed. And how do we destroy death, Adam? Is it by bringing forth a carnal sword? No. No. But are we going to spare anyone? Because it says, teaching all nations. We're to give the gospel to everyone. Every creature we're to give that gospel to. So are we trying to spare anyone? No. We're not trying to spare not one person. We're to go to every village, every town, every place and give that gospel and we're taking the sword with us and we're there to destroy. We're there to conquer. We're there to quote vanquish. But what are we there to destroy and vanquish and conquer? Let's go. We're there to destroy that enemy. We're there to destroy the works of the devil. And we're there to set the captives free, right? Because men are captive to what? Sin and death. That enemy shall be destroyed is death, right? And destroying the enemy, which is death. Interesting. All right, we'll try that again, guys. Um, there we go. We're going to destroy that enemy, which is death. And to do that, we know it is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. Listen, what are we doing that with? The words. That I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. 
That's why we don't speak our own words, but we cry aloud and we spare not. We want to destroy the enemy which is death. We lift up our voice, lift up thy voice. Who's our voice? It's God that worketh in you to fulfill his good will and pleasure. It's the spirit that beareth witness. The spirit is truth. It's the spirit that quickeneth, that giveth life. The flesh profiteth nothing. We can't give eternal life by our flesh. Right? Hence, you've got to be born again. It's not by going out and having sex. It's not multiplying the flesh, because that's just to multiply sin, because in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. In all men's flesh dwelleth no good thing. And show my people, the children of the flesh, their transgressions. Hey, you got to be born again. And the house of Jacob, Jacob believed, guys. The reason that the Bible has Jacob and Esau is God is trying to show you that he's no respecter of person, that they both started out children of the flesh. One believed, one did not. And this is why Jesus came to Nicodemus who thought of himself as being what? A child of what? Of God, a chosen of God. And told him, nope, you must be born again. This is why Jesus told the man who thought he was of the household of Israel. He says, no, you're not my sheep. You believe not, you're not my sheep. My sheep hear my voice today. Cry aloud, spare not. Lift up, lift up thy voice like a trumpet. We hold the word of God to high esteem. We got to be born again by the incorruptible word of God. We got to be sealed and sanctified in the word of God. Sanctify me by thy word. Thy word is truth. The words that I speak to you, they're a spirit in their life. So we take that word, which is mighty, in destroying the enemy. And that enemy is death. So the reason God used Jacob and Esau is because they were, quote, unquote, twins, according to the flesh. But one believed. There's no, quote, unquote, line of the flesh. There's no, quote, genealogy of the flesh, which is a holy genealogy that makes people the children of God somehow via procreation of sperm, carnal seed. It says avoid... Foolish questions and strivings about the law because they're unprofitable and what? Vain, vanity of vanities. My sheep never perish. Children of the flesh are not children of God. So we're not sparing the enemy, guys. We're not sparing the enemy. So in, in, in talking about the enemy, which we just know that the enemy is death. Enemy is death. And we know that it's the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profit nothing, the words that I speak to you, their spirit in their life. And in that, we know that we're in a war. We know that we're in a war. And so when the Bible says to go out and conquer, spare not, to destroy. It's not talking about destroying people by killing them with a literal sword. Okay. If we go into this verse. We're going to go here and we're going to look. Now, in Ephesians 6, 9, it says, And ye masters, do the same things unto them, forbearing, forbearing, threatening, knowing that your master also is in heaven. Neither is there respect of persons, listen, neither is there respect of persons with him. Who? Not them. Him. God is a spirit. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. Where is his, where are his brethren? One Lord, one faith, one baptism. We all been baptized by one spirit into one body. Okay? 
Finally, my brother, be strong. Where? In the Lord. He's talking about those who are born again here. And in the power of his might. What's the power of his might? He's going to tell us here. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Who's the enemy? Who's the enemy? Who is the enemy? For when we were in the flesh, the motions of sin, which were by the law, did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto what? Death. Now, how is it that this guy, how is it that these guys who go to what? Quote, think about it. They go to Bible school. They go to school to learn certain things, right? They're going to school to learn how to, quote, interpret the Bible. And you got to ask yourself, who taught, the, who taught the teacher? Who taught the teacher that taught the teacher that taught the teacher? For when we were in the flesh, wait a minute. It says when we were in the flesh. Why? Because the Bible also says, ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be the spirit of God dwelling you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. We only have the flesh for what? For the benefit of those who must hear the gospel and believe as we did. And then they will no longer be children of the flesh. And remember, the things which are not seen are eternal, so we must have flesh to reach those who are carnal in a temporal world. And this is why Stephen said, called upon God, saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Because flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Meaning, the things which are temporal cannot inherit the things which are eternal. The things which are corrupt of this world cannot inherit what? The things which are eternal. Meaning, what the Bible said is true. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. My kingdom is not of this world. So it says, for when we were in the flesh, the sins of mo the motions of sin, which were by the law, did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto what? Death. Flesh brings forth the fruit of death. Right? So we are here to do something. We are to conquer the enemy, which is death. And so we to do that, we need to put on the whole armor of God. We're to put on the whole armor of God that we would be able to stand against the wiles of the devil because the devil brings forth death. He goes around as a roaring lion seeking whom he may what? Devour. But then it says, look, the war that we're having, it's just like this guy. He's a soldier, but he's wearing a Hawaiian shirt. It says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world. Against what? Spiritual wickedness in high places. He's now here telling us about the mind of God. He's here telling us how he is going to excuse God. And so to excuse God, because his mind cannot comprehend it, his natural mind cannot comprehend it, he's just going to change God before your very eyes. He's just going to say, well, it would be a sin, but when God says to do it, it's not a sin. Though, I do agree. These things are horrific. But they're obligated to do it because God told them to do it. And once God tells you to do it, then it's okay. It's not a sin, though I still see it as horrific. Based on my interpretation of the Bible. So he's high-minded. He essentially is sitting here and he's saying, I'm judging God but I'm not judging God. It's horrific, but if God said to do it, I ask you the question, what, what thieving pirate colonizer wouldn't want to take the Bible and use it in such a way? 
what person who treasures this world, you know, the Bible says, store not for yourselves treasures on earth where thieves break in and moth for What person who wants the treasures of this world wouldn't just say, well, I know what I'll do. Here's what I'll do. I'll use the Bible for my justification. I'll just claim that, I'll just claim that God commanded me to do it. And I'll make the focus about the outward man. Hence, I must establish what God's chosen looks like. And I'll use the Bible to say that this is a prophecy that I'll destroy all men and I'll take their lands. It's not about destroying the enemy, which is death. Oh no, I'm at peace with death. I'm an enemy of Christ because I want my weapons to be carnal. And I want the filthy lucre sake. because they were incredibly wicked and deserving of judgment. In the same way that centuries later, God would use the pagan armies of Babylon to invade Israel and bring judgment upon his own people for their wickedness and evil. Now, the So when these guys make statements... How can there be judgment brought on God's people when there's no condemnation of those who are in Christ Jesus and the children of the flesh are not the children of God? See, when the theologian speaks, and he's, this guy is teaching other theologians, I want you to mind that, that he's teaching other theologians. He's the, quote, head rabbi in this room. And uh, he's teaching other theologians. Sorry about the squeaky chair. He's teaching other theologians. And he's trying to propose his theory he says, you know, I've, I'm proposing a theory whereby we can explain this away to people because apparently people see the hypocrisy and the contradictions. Uh, we want the money, though, because we are going out and we have all these temples built with hands where we stand in front and get people to give money to us. And the government uh, endorses us via 501c3, giving us a tax deduction as long as we continue to teach this dominion theology, this uh, dominion theology or manifest destiny theology or doctrine of discovery theology, which we've used historically throughout time to conquer. We Pharisees need to somehow excuse us. We need to keep this thing going because if we teach it the right way, then it'll expose that the fraud throughout all history. Then people will lose faith in us. They'll lose faith in us. Right? The really difficult problem, then, it seems to me, is the children. How is it consistent with God's nature that he would command that these Canaanite children be killed? Well, here, what I would say is that God doesn't wrong these children in taking their lives early. God has the right to give and take life as he sees fit. No one can say to God, you should have let me live longer. Uh, I have a claim on a long life. Many people do die. So here's the thing. When he says God has a right to give and take life. See, when they say statements like that, it's like, well, logically in your mind, you say, well, yeah, I guess that's, that is true. But what they don't seem to believe or understand from the Bible that there's this, there's this incident that happened, guys. I'm going to go back. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eat thereof, thou shalt surely die. For as in Adam all die, even so where? In Christ shall all be what? Shall all be made alive. Meaning, if you believe the gospel, you'll be baptized into Christ. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. But if you're not born again, Nicodemus, guess what? You die in Adam. 
So you got to be quickened by the spirit. It's the spirit that quickened it that gives us life. The flesh profit of what? Nothing. So when the Bible talks about this, this guy, this theologian, this chief rabbi teaching the other rabbis, what he doesn't seem to comprehend is that in the Bible, it explains that all die in Adam. And Jesus says, I come to give life and life more abundantly. If he comes to give life, And thou hast given him power over all flesh that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. Okay? And I give unto them, who does he give to them? Eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. So he's explaining, he says, look, but ye believe not, because you're not of my sheep. Who aren't of his sheep? My sheep hear my voice. Remember? Cry aloud and spare not, lift up thy voice. Cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice. My sheep hear my voice. I know them. Why can't you hear my voice? Today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. And they follow me. How do they follow me? In the regeneration, washing, and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Regeneration is being to be born again. To be regenerated is to be re gene, avoid foolish questions and genealogies. New family, born again, regeneration. And I give unto them eternal life. What do they have before? And they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. But Jesus said unto him, look, my sheep hear my voice. They follow me. Jesus said to him, follow me. And let the what? Let the dead bury their dead. That's, how do the theologians explain that away? Why is he calling people dead who are walking around? Oh, in Revelations when I said I saw the dead raised. See, when you're born the first time, you don't have eternal life. So God says you're dead. And when you don't believe, you're what? Twice dead. Twice dead. Plucked up by the root. So it's very clear what the Bible said. But Jesus said unto him, follow me. How do we follow him? You got to follow him in the regeneration, washing, renewing of the Holy Ghost. As many as are led by the what? Spirit of God, these are the sons of God, led by the Spirit, because there's no condemnation of those who are aware in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the what? Flesh. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, but after the what? Spirit. Stephen, when he was stoned, called upon God, saying, Lord Jesus, receive my what? Spirit. Come up here. You're a stranger and a pilgrim to that world. Your kingdom is not a kingdom of darkness and corruption. Light had no communion with darkness. You're of the kingdom of light. You're a child of the light. Come up here. So when he's trying to talk about the whole, you know, war, it says, take unto you the whole armor of God. 
whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand the, in the day of evil, death, and having done all to stand, what must I do? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Being found in him, God is our strength. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. Remember, this is the whole armor of God. The whole is going. The Bible is about to give us the whole armor. This is the whole armor of God now. So you're going to have to reconcile this. Having your loins girt about with truth, having the breastplate of righteousness, found in Him, having not our own righteousness. It's the Spirit that beareth witness. The Spirit is truth. Having your feet shod about with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Feet, as many as are led by the Spirit, right? Preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, look, taking the shield of faith. Wait, that's the substance of things, hope for the evidence of things not seen. Wherein ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. This guy is using his tongue and he's speaking some very foul things. He's speaking some very foul things. My soul is among lions. These devouring lions are everywhere. And I light even among them that are set on fire. His heart is burning with lust for this world. That's why he must, that's why he must turn God to be like him. He says, God's heart is my heart. God's head is my head. That's what he's saying. Even among the what? Sons of men. Son of God is not, the, the sons of God are not the sons of men. The children of the flesh are not the children of God whose teeth, see, he's got weapons too, are spears. They pierce themselves asunder. And arrows, those fiery darts. And their tongue, a sharp sword. It's a war. Their tongue's a sharp sword. But it talks about us. It says, look, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So we have the word of God versus the words of men. So we cry aloud and we spare not. We lift up our word, our voice, our sword, like a trumpet. And we say, repent of your dead works. To he that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Being found in him, having not mine own righteousness, you must be born again. You must die to self. You must die to who? You must die to death. You must defeat death. You must defeat that beast. And the world says, who is like unto the beast? Who can defeat death? And we say, death wears thy sting, grave wears thy victory. We've conquered death by the word of God. In infancy. And it is God's prerogative when to terminate a person's life. So he has the right to take the lives of these Canaanite children whenever he wants to. He's taking their death. He's killing death and giving them life. Um, moreover, if you believe as I do, and I think as Jesus did, in the salvation of children, small children, then by bringing the deaths of these children early, God ensured their eternal salvation. In other words, he conferred upon them. So he's saying by bringing the death. See, they're the children of this world. 
the children of the flesh. They are not the children of God. So he's telling them that you got to die to self. You got to die. You got to die to death. And so he's saying in Mark 8, 35, for whosoever will save his life shall lose it. Why? Because these people oppose the word of God. Remember, there's two swords. Now, we already have the victory. We've defeated death. But the children of the flesh, they're confused. And they oppose themselves. That's why their camp's divided. Right? Their camp's divided and there's confusion amongst them. And they war against themselves for the treasures of this world. All claiming that they themselves are what? Somehow God's people. So God's explaining to them that, no, if you don't believe that I am he, you will die in your sin. And you're not the children of God. And so you oppose yourself by hardening your heart. And he's saying, look, whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospels, the same shall save it. So you have a choice. You have a choice. But the problem with the people who are not born again is they're already defeated. They don't know it. They're already defeated. And they worship the dragon who gave the power unto the beast. Right? The words of men don't do don't bring life. But men were defeated by the beast. And they worship the beast. They bring forth death, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? Who's the enemy, guys? Mind you, who is the enemy? Who rules over all the world? And deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. All their lifetime subject to bondage. Who, how can you escape death? How can you escape those roaring lions? How can you escape those roaring lions? Those who are subject to bondage. But he who was born of the bondwoman was born after the flesh. But he of the free one was born after the promise. After you heard and believe the gospel of your salvation, you're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. So that's word conquers death, guys. On them an incommensurable good, eternal life, knowledge of himself. Whereas if these children had been allowed to, to live, especially in Canaanite culture, they would have been infected with the same poison as the adults, and most of them would have been lost. It's ironic that this guy talks about poison. There's got to be a proverb somewhere. Their wine is the poison of dragons and the cruel venom, and venom of asp. For the arrows of the Almighty are within me. The poison whereof drinketh up my spirit. The terrors of God do set themselves in array against me. Right? The terrors of God do set themselves in array against me. He's talking about those who aren't born again. Children of the flesh are against him. Right? He shall suck the poison of ass and the viper's tongue shall slay him. Right? The viper's tongue shall slay him. Their poison is like the poison of a serpent. They are like the deaf adder that stoppeth her ear, right? These are this guy. It's this serpent who's wearing this. Sorry about this chairman's bat. This serpent who's wearing this uh, this Hawaiian shirt. <laughs> you know? And again, 
we war not with flesh and blood, but his words, their poison is like the poison of a serpent. They are like the death adder that stoppeth her ear. They have sharpened their tongues. Remember the sword? They have sharpened their tongues like a serpent. Adder's poison is under their lips. Selah. Listen. Their throat is an open sepulcher. They don't speak the words of life. Their tongues, they have used deceit. With their tongues, they use deceit, right? The poison of asp is under their lips. But the tongue can no man tame. Wild beast. It is an unruly evil full of death out of the heart. Out of the heart, the mouth speaketh. It's desperately wicked. Who can know it? God knows it. God knows it. He knows what's within man. If the light in you be darkness, how dark is that light? He talks about these guys. I can find it, maybe. The Bible talks about, look, you know. The field is the world. And he's saying, Arab, the field is the world. And in the world are all the children of the flesh who are all children of darkness. My kingdom is not this world, and the children of the flesh aren't children of God. The good seed are the children of the kingdom, those who are born again by the incorruptible word of God. But the tares are the children of the wicked one. Those who are not born again. Children of the flesh. And he said, verily, verily, I say, unless ye accept ye be what? Oh, remember this word conversion? We are the circumcision which worship God in spirit and put no confidence in the flesh. We are the circumcision. You know what? You know what? We're, we're, the, we're the Israel of God. You know the ones who are converted? The ones who are born again? Remember Nicodemus? Remember, you got to be born again. <laughs> Remember Esau? Your brother Jacob believed. He was converted. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, David, Solomon. All these guys who you talk about, they believed God. You guys start talking about foolish questions and genealogies, which are unprofitable in vain. Except ye be born again, converted, and become as what? Little children. Ye shall not enter. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. My kingdom is not of this world. So their deaths would actually mean their salvation, and those children once in heaven would be grateful that God had issued such a command. To uh. I'm looking for how come I can't find it? It's, it's under the weird how sometimes you you know something's okay. Here we go. Rather says unto he that heareth my word, why can't you hear my voice, my sheep hear my voice, and believeth on him that sent me, hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed, is passed from where? Wait a minute, what did you have before? Let the dead bear the dead, from death unto life. 
So when he's talking, this guy is very, very, very confused. To the Israeli armies to wipe them out. So it seems to me that he listen, conferred upon listen them. Listen to what he's saying. He's talking about the Israeli armies. And he, who's the army of God, guys? Are the, are the, are, is the army of God the children of the flesh? No. What are the weapons of the army of God, guys? Are they carnal weapons? No. I'm an incommensurable good, eternal life, knowledge of himself. Whereas if these children had been allowed to, to live, especially in Canaanite culture, they would have been infected with the same poison as the adults, and most of them would have been lost. So there... So this guy is a serpent. He's, he's, a, he's a viper himself. He's sitting here. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to the baptism, he said to them, O oh, generation. Now, guys, the thing you got to ask yourself, how did, how did these pastors not reconcile this? O oh, generation. These are people who have not been born again. O oh, generation of vipers, right? Since all men are liars, right? All men have that weapon of the tongue. All men, are, let God be true and every man a liar. O oh, generation of vipers. Who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Oh, you generation of vipers. Listen, how can ye, being evil, listen, speak? What's this word? The word of God. How can you speak good things? When God speaks and gives us, I give unto them eternal. When you're a new creature created in Christ, are you a good thing or an evil thing? You're a good thing. When God creates you, a new creature, and you're sealed and sanctified in God, being found in him, having not my own righteousness. God is good. So you're sealed and sanctified in God, having him as your righteousness. You're a good thing, and you came about because you were a new creature by the what? Word of God. God spoke it. But what do men bring forth? What do men, these generation of vipers, how can you being evil speak good things? from Look. From the out of the abundance of the what heart, the mouth what speaketh his weapons. That's his weapons. It all starts. It all starts with your nightly news segment, guys. It all starts in the quote unquote so called church. It all starts from from the pulpit. They surrounded us on all sides. In fact, not only have they surrounded us, we war against our own flesh. But thank God, we have the victory over the flesh. The camp of the saints is a campus about with the children of the flesh. I know it's not the camp of the saints that you heard them talking about on TV. It's not a racial quote unquote group as they would have you believe. It's the children of the flesh versus the children of the promise and the children of the flesh. These are not the children of God. God is called the father of spirits. Deaths would actually mean their salvation, and those children once in heaven would be grateful that God had issued such a command to the Israeli armies to wipe them out. So it seems to me that there isn't anybody that God has wronged in this case. The adults deserve the punishment. The children are delivered from evil and given salvation for an eternal life so that they simply... No one is wronged in, in bringing about the command. So it's not inconsistent with God's compassionate and loving nature to issue such a command. One more thing I would like to say. Why would God do this? I think that by issuing so horrifying a command, God gave an object lesson to the people of Israel about the necessity of separating themselves from pagan gods and peoples separating themselves from pagan gods and peoples isn't that isn't that ironic <laughs> isn't that something so this is this guy based on his interpretation you know a couple of things you know he considers the children of the flesh to be the children of god 
contrary to the very Bible that he claims to be teaching. Because, and two, he thinks that the weapons are carnal. He thinks that the weapons are carnal, like the, uh, contrary to what the Bible is speaking. He doesn't really believe that the enemy that needs to be destroyed is death, contrary to the Bible, right? This is, again, this guy is a teach. he's a teacher of teachers. He's a teacher of teachers. He's a chief Pharisee. And he thinks that God covets this world. Despite the Bible says, my kingdom is not of this world. Store for, for not for yourself treasures on earth. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm baffled because the devil took Jesus to a high mountain. Maybe, maybe I can find it. And the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain. Exceeding high mountain. You know, the exceeding high mountain. Guess what it's stacked with, guys? Guess why that mountain is exceedingly high? <laughs> guess why that mountain is exceedingly high? Guess what that mountain represents? That exceedingly high mountain. Guess what it represents? It's, it's, it's men. Men's heart of stone bringing forth what? Death. It is exceedingly high because the kingdoms of this world are do what? Look around you. Look around you. You're without excuse. Isn't it funny how death keeps multiplying all around you? That mountain stacked bodies, guys. Our flesh will be in that. Our flesh is in that mountain. That exceedingly high mountain. That's our flesh. That's our flesh. And that mountain will be brought low because it will go back to the dust. That exceedingly high mountain is the death of all men. The devil taketh him up to an exceedingly, the destroyer, the destroyer, the devourer takes him up to an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdom of the world and the glory of them. I mean, let's take, let's take a look. Let's read. And he said unto him, all these things will I give thee if thou wilt just what? Fall down. How'd the mountain get so high? Oh, men fall in battle, guys. Oh, men fall. They fall. They worship the beast. Who is unlike? Who's like unto the beast? Who can defeat the beast? He's like, ah, I'll give you what I gave. I'll give you what I gave Eve. Adam and Eve, I gave them the knowledge. Good and evil. I'm here to get, I'm here to make another offer. Your eyes are be open. Just fall down and worship me. Death. Death. Don't you don't you want it? Don't you want the kingdoms of this world? Then Jesus said unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him, notice he's like him, only shalt thou serve. Well, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Children of the flesh, it can't please God, because Children of the flesh are already, they're defeated. Let the dead bear the dead. This guy has a contradiction that's irreconcilable. In a way that they could not have learned otherwise. The whole system of the Old Testament law is based upon separating things, um, not um, eating certain foods. <laughs> the whole system of the Old Testament law is based on separating things. Huh, how so, uh, Chief Pharisee? Well, you know, let me tell you, because I'm, I've 
studied the Bible a little bit. Let me do all my knowledge and all my classes and my degrees and stuff. Well, you know, the law is a schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ. And once we become the faith, we're no longer under a schoolmaster. See, the law just reveals that we're all sin, that we come short of the glory of God. And so we don't try to rob God by claiming we're keeping the law or offering him the works of our hands. We understand that we must die to self because the enemy is death. And so if we die to death, we must forsake ourselves by believing the gospel. And then by believing the gospel, we're no longer children of the flesh and we're no longer of this world. And hence, this world is darkness and we have no communion with darkness. Our kingdom is in heaven, not a kingdom of darkness. And so now we who are born again are children of the light. We're here in the dark world to let our light shine before men that they may glorify our Father that's in heaven. And the way that they do that is simply by believing the gospel because when they do that, their new creatures created in Christ, they're made a good thing by the word of God that liveth and abideth forever. Because God is not worshipped by death, darkness, nor corruption or death. What is he going to say? What is this guy who seems so friendly and people don't see the warfare Did you let your guard down, your faith down because of a, because of his shirt? Did he disarm you with his shirt? Do they disarm you with their smooth words? Oh, did they disguise him? Did he disguise himself as an angel of light? Oh, you thought he was defending God. Some things are clean. Others are unclean. Don't mix linen and wool. Uh, Don't mix the children of the flesh with the children of the promise. Don't mix light with darkness. Don't meet, mix death with eternal life. Don't mix corruption with incorruption. Don't mix... <laughs> I mean, give me a break. Um, other things are not supposed to be mixed. Uh, over and over again, the these... Oh, so now you get the understanding why people are trying to make the children of the flesh, the children of God, and they need a way to distinguish it from the outward appearance. Hence, we have the wonderful invention of racism. You know, racism, another invention, another tool in the devil's toolbox, another weapon. I thank God I'm not like other men. Right? You bought it though, right? Hook, line, and sinker. Your eyes have bought it, right? Didn't you go to the prophecy conference at your church? Didn't you not take the tour of the trip? Didn't you guys get in the group discount? Didn't you go to the quote, quote, holy city? Oh, you forgot, like they forgot, my kingdom is not of this world. Ritual laws in the Old Testament emphasize not mixing things, but, but separating them. These were meant to be object lessons to the people of Israel to that they were set apart for God as a peculiar people, holy and dedicated to himself. And as such... A peculiar people. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither does corruption inherit incorruption. Right? Look. And we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither does corruption inherit incorruption. Look. Maybe I learned a spell. For the promise that should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of what? Faith. So it's saying Abraham was born again, right? It talks about, look, and the father of circumcision to whom they are not of the circumcision only. Look, look, let's go. Let's go. Let's go up. And he received the what? sign of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness of faith, which he had yet being uncircumcised, that he might be the father of all them that what? Believe through they be not circumcised. 
that righteousness might be imputed unto them also. Imputed, being found in him, having not my own righteousness. And the father of circumcision to them who are not of the circumcision only, but of who also walk in the steps of the faith of our father. Look, walk in the steps of the faith of our father. There's no condemnation of those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the what? Flesh, but after the spirit, spirit, faith of our father Abraham, which he had being yet uncircumcised. For the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the faith, my kingdom is not of this world, through the righteousness of faith. For if, the, if, for if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void. Wait a minute, but the law is a schoolmaster to bring me on the Christ. So basically what people are saying is they're saying, well, the law has no impact on these people because they're already heirs. They don't need it as a schoolmaster. Hence, that's why they go around conquering and practicing lawlessness. Right? Faith is made, for if there which are of, are of the law be of heirs, then faith is made void. What's the, what's, the, what's the point of the gospel? The gospel then is just foolish. Why are you preaching the gospel to them? Talking about saying you must be born again. Faith is made void. The gospel is preached unto them as well as unto us, but it did not profit them, being not, not mixed with faith in them that heard it. If it be of the law, then you don't need faith, because man can keep the law, and then God's, God's, God's not righteous. Why do you need the righteousness of God through faith? And the promise made of what? None effect. Because the law worketh wrath, for where the, no law is, there is no transgression. When you're found in him, you don't, you don't need the law, right? Therefore, if it is a faith that it might be by grace, to the end the promise might be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. See, Abraham says what? Could you, a lot of people be confused by this. Like, what do you keep talking about Abraham being the father? I thought I said, call no man and alert your father, you have one heavenly father. Exactly. It's no longer Abraham that lives, but what? God that liveth in Abraham. God is the head of Abraham. God is the savior of the body. So we who are the saved, the body, have the Savior in us. Right? As it is written, I have made thee the father of many nations. Before him whom the, he believed, even God, who quickened, listen, quickened the what? what? What did you have? You passed from what? Death to life. Quickened the dead. So let's, let's stop the line. Quicken the dead is talking about it's the spirit that quickeneth, that giveth life, the flesh profit nothing. If, if, your, if their pastor slash master Pharisee here can't comprehend or understand the Bible, you understand that why would he go and teach and so-called dedicate his quote-unquote life, which is death, to teaching the word of God, and he's misrepresenting it. How important is he in the cause of this world that he's given a tax deduction to teach the lie that he's teaching? Because he's trying to teach that there's, quote, unquote, this place called Israel who's fighting. And he's saying, well, that's God's people. And then God's ordained them to go out and conquer. In fact, if they don't do it, then they're disobeying God. And when they do it, it's not even a sin to go kill, steal, and destroy. Because it's God, God giving them a divine decree. That's my theology, he says. He's such a nice man. Look at him. Who is like unto this beast, guys? He's talked about it being chosen. You saw in the Bible, it talks about old generation of vipers. These guys are still confused. They're like, I can't figure out the difference. Why sometimes they call generation of vipers, but then the other times they call children of God. How, how can it be? They're like, we, these theologians can't, can, can, they're so confused. They don't understand. They're like, I don't understand. The Bible's so complex. Oh, you must be born again. Children of the flesh are on children of God. I know it says that, but it's, I need it to be a race. So what do we do? But ye are chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a holy and holy nation, Israel above. Jerusalem above, as free as mother of us all. Abraham sought a better country than heavenly. Let's look at what Abraham saw. Since, since God said my kingdom is not of this world, but, a, but now they desire a better country that is and heavenly. We're born the image of the earth, so we bear the image of the heavenly. 
and heavenly. Wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. I guess if the if the country is in heaven, I hope the city is with the country. Right? Oh, Jerusalem, which is above, is free as mother thought. Yeah, that's right. That makes sense. So when it says, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that he, that ye should show forth, let your light shine before men, they may glorify your fathers in heaven. Praise of him, who's the him, who hath called you out of darkness, right? the light came to the world of darkness, into his marvelous light. See, it's a chosen generation, and chosen generation are all those who've been regenerated. But you know, if I was somebody like this guy, and I'm trying to teach this world, I'm going to, I'm going to change that chosen generation. You know what I'm going to change it to, guys? Slowly but surely, I'm going to change it to people, and then I'm going to start doing things like this. Race. Race. Children of the flesh aren't children of God, but somehow, I mean, I know flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, but now we got to start changing the Bible, guys. Race. Got to change it. Race. We're not trying to teach. Remember, all lives matter. Remember, race. Race, 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 race. He's just trying to help you guys out. Behold, ye despisers, they despise the truth, guys, and wander and perish. Ye despisers and wander and perish, for I work a work in your days, a work which ye shall in no wise believe. People don't even think Jesus is here. People can say, but Jesus isn't here. Though a man declare it, lift up thy voice, cry aloud, spare not. The sword is the word of God. Today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. He says, you won't. He says, look, you shall no wise believe, though a man declare it unto you. I guess God already knew they weren't going to believe it. I guess that's why he said, I come but for the lost sheep of the household of Israel. My sheep hear my voice. I know them. <laughs> <laughs> they, I give unto them eternal life. They shall never perish. None shall snatch them from my hand. They were not to mingle or uh, compromise with the pagan peoples of Israel's neighbors. And they weren't to compromise. Are we to compromise with uh, the gospel, guys? Are we to compromise the gospel? Are we to pervert the gospel, right? Look, for we are not as many which corrupt the word of God, but as of, but as of sincerity, but as of who? As of God. In the sight of God, whoa, speak we where? Where are we speaking, guys? So does this guy believe in one Lord, one faith, one baptism? Does he believe God's people are all are all those who are born again, not not children of the flesh? No, but he's gone to Bible school, guys. He's gone to Bible schools, school. Vanity of vanities, man. You see all the books on the shelf, right? He even has a book on the shelf that's his own book. I think it's William Lane Craig. The cosmological arguments or something like that. And there's another book here. Learn. But I think that this horrifying command to go in 
and drive out these Canaanite tribes and to exterminate any that tried to stay behind was uh, an object lesson that God gave them uh, about the importance of being this separated people, holy and, uh, and dedicated and set apart to the Lord. Uh, and we know that even this lesson in the end uh, wasn't infallible, that in fact they, they fell with tiresome repetitiveness into the error of absorbing the worship of the gods of their pagan neighbors um, and intermarrying with Canaanites and, and other people. So even this lesson didn't infallibly produce its result, but it does seem to me... So when these guys talk about stuff like intermarrying, that's, again, this is glorying in the flesh. This is teaching racism. Because you took, how would you know who would, if a Jew, if a Jew is not one outwardly? Guys, look, if, if the Bible says, look, the Bible tells you, for he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh. Then it tells you who a Jew is, but he is, look, he is a Jew, which is one inwardly. The inward man is the spirit man. The outward man is the what? Carnal man. That's why it says we are the circumcision which worship God in spirit and put no confidence in the flesh. It is of the heart and in the what? A spirit. A spirit hath not flesh and bones. The children of the flesh are not children of God. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. If you want to pervert the word of God and try to make it of this world, then you need to do something so men can see because you don't have faith. So what you inevitably need to do is you need to give them something they can see. So to give them something to see, you try to build his kingdom down here and say, oh, it is actually down here. Oh, and actually, by the way, you need to know what, what we look like and we look like this. And hence, you need the invention of race. Right? See, avoid foolish questions. It's not of the flesh. It's in the spirit. Spirit has not flesh and bones. In genealogy, avoid foolish questions in genealogies and strive is about the law. Right? Right? But unprofitable in vain, whose praise is not of what? Men. Oh, the accolades, guys. You hear your, look at the accolades from this guy. God's people, God's people. Okay. Who, who are God's people? I thought the children of the flesh weren't the children of God. Oh, I, that part of the Bible, I don't really, I don't really get that part either. I don't understand that. I mean, it bears witness against themselves. People go to funerals every, you know, there's people dying every minute. Insane. That that would give God a, a good reason to issue such a command. So that would be my defense of these commands. It seems to me that there is nothing here that is incompatible with God's being all-powerful and all-loving. Um, and, moreover, that it fits in with the divine command theory of ethics, where whatever God commands you to do, becomes your moral duty to do. Do you want to follow up? Divine command theory of ethics is where God, whatever God commands you to do, it's your moral duty to do. To, to, the divine command theory of ethics. It's insane. Because by this guy's definition, all you have to do is get some kind of somebody who claims they can interpret the Bible better than you. You become your own quote unquote papal pope and you issue your papal bulls. And you say, well, everybody else is a heathen. We're not heathens. Go out, enslave, capture, conquer, destroy, drive out those heathens from the land. And we'll, we'll take the leftovers and we'll do what we want and keep whatever we lust for with our eyes. And, and anybody questions it, we'll just say you're going against God. You're just, you're going against God. How could you fight against us? You're going against God. Don't you see how this is a little... Thing is being repackaged, repackaged, and regurgitated. Look, for we are the circumcision of worship God in the spirit, and rejoice where in Christ. there's one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Remember that, and have no confidence in the flesh. Well, there's a lot of confidence in the flesh in these guys. Look, Let's see if I can find it. Look. This is what this guy is. Look, woe unto you, scribes. Well, textual criticism tells us we need to change the Bible around. That's why we changed it from chosen generation to chosen race. And Pharisees. Well, you know, 
Let's, let me tell you how you interpret it. Hypocrites. Hypocrites. For ye compass sea and land. Right? They're, they're, they're traveling. Oh, they're, they're on a mission. They're on a missionary to make one proselyte. They're trying to convert people to do what? To believe their lies. And when he is made, do you bring forth life? No, you made him two fold more the child of hell than yourselves. Woe to you, ye blind guides. As many as are led by the spirit of God, these are the sons of God. I know my sheep. My sheep follow me today if you hear his voice. Which say, whosoever shall swear by the temple, it is nothing but whosoever shall swear by the gold of the temple, he is a debtor. What do they, what do they cherish? They cherish the outward things. Ye fools blind, for whether is greater the gold of the temple or he that what? Sanctify me by thy word. Thy word is truth. And whosoever shall swear by the altar, they're offering up what kind of sacrifices? They're offering death. The death, the dumb, the lame. They're offering death. It is nothing. But whosoever shall swear by the gift that is upon it, he is guilty. It's a gift to believe the gospel. They think that's foolish. Ye fools, ye blind, for whether is greater the gift or the altar that sanctify it. Whosoever therefore shall swear by the altar, sweareth by it and by all things thereon. And whosoever shall swear by the temple, sweareth by it and by him that dwelleth what? Therein. Well, where are we dwelling in? One Lord, one faith, one baptism. Right? They claim that they're giving the words of God, but they, they speak against God. Right? And he that shall swear by heaven, swear by the throne of God and by him that sitteth thereon. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, for ye pay tithes of men, anise and cumin, and have omitted the waiters of matters of the law, the law of the schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ. By the law shall no, no, no flesh be justified in his sight, being justified freely by his grace, what? And mercy. I come to give life and life more abundantly by grace through faith, you're saved, not of works, as any man should boast. But the law of the schoolmaster leads us unto Christ. Once we come to faith, we're no longer under schoolmaster, because there's no condemnation. Those who are in Christ Jesus who walk not at your the flesh, but after the spirit. And what? Faith. Faith. From faith to faith, the just shall live by faith. These ought ye to have done and not to leave the other undone. Ye blind guys, ye strain at a gnat and swallow a camel. Right? They're all about the outward appearance. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you make clean the outside of the cup, of the platter, but within you're full of what? extortion and excess what's extortion guys what's extortion well the practice of obtaining something especially money through force or threats force or threats right i'll crash your economy i'll do this i'll do that this is what's going to happen to your family if you don't do this I'm going to expose you here if you don't do this. Look, we got you. You're caught in adultery. We got you on tape. Thou blind Pharisees, clean first that which is within. Put in me a new spirit. Right? Right? That the outside of them may be clean. We are clothed in his righteousness. You got to be born again. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye are like the whited sepulchers, who indeed appear beautiful outward. Right? They talk about appear beautiful outward. They, they, they hide behind, claiming that they are all about the law. Oh, we just want peace and justice, and you know, we just got to heap onto you more, more laws. Why do they heap on more laws? Actually, so they can take away more of your stuff. Through extortion. Got to levy another tax. Got to levy another quote unquote tithe. Got to you got to offer more stuff. You know, give to us. You're giving to God. You know how it goes. You know how it goes. You know how it works. But within, you're full of what? Dead. Let the dead, 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 dead man's bones. And of all, listen. All uncleanness. All. 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 Even so, ye also outwardly appear righteous. Well, being found in him, having not my own righteousness unto men. But within, you are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. 
God doesn't sound, doesn't sound like God's being very like, uh, I mean, it goes on, guys. It goes on and on and on. Fill you up in the measure of your father's. I mean, he doesn't sound like he's looking. If, if feel you, then I, I thought Abraham was their father. Feel you then, a, it, it must be Abraham must have been born again because it says feel you then up the measures of your fathers, and he's just condemning them. Look, oh, ye serpents, ye generation of vipers. Oh, but I so it's a, but I thought in another verse in the New Modern Bibles, it says ye generation. They should change ye chosen race of vipers. Ye, right? Shouldn't they change that? Ye serpent, ye what? Chosen? Because instead of saying generation, chosen generation, it should say ye serpents, ye um, chosen race of vipers. I mean, if they're going to do that, why don't they be consistent in their interpretation? He knows they're not consistent, though, right? That's what makes them hypocrites. Because they, they know what they're doing when they're changing these Bibles, guys. Don't, don't, it's a mistake. You know, some of the Bible, some of the... Th no, they know what they're doing. They're, they're lying. They're just lying. There's no way. The, the way that these Bibles have been changed, guys, there's no way in the world you can be like, well, this it has been changed, but it's because in some of the manuscripts... No, no, there's no... You, there, in no manuscript that it say chosen race. These guys are lying. And what they talk about, they talk about... Well, it's based on what they thought. What did they mean? What did they think? What did the quote unquote translators quote unquote think it should have been? So it's all based on their mind, what they think it should have been. Okay, I'm going to let it go here, but I'm going to play out a little bit more. here. Up on that, I know that was a mouthful, but the question was a big one and important. There's the mic. How does that, though, absolve God from the actual, the acts of the Israelis when I could say, and you could say, and people have said throughout the centuries, I'm commanded by God to enslave these people or to kill these people. I would say that it doesn't absolve God from what the Israeli armies did. On the contrary, they were his instrument. They were God's doing these things by the Anyway, I'm going to let it go. Um, when Edmund Dantes seeks vengeance upon the three... Anyway, he's going to try to justify his heresy. He's basically saying, well, blah, 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 blah. Another guy is going to come up. Let's see what this guy is going to say. Um, here. You could be led into all manner of wickedness and terrible evil. You can be led in all kind of manner of wickedness and terrible evil, but he's just said, well, but sometimes God tells you to do it. And what God tells you to do is not, it's not wicked because God told you to do it. And so now you're obligated to do it. The divine decree of something, whatever he called it. I mean, it's, it's amazingly corrupt. Uh, one problem with the analysis. Uh, it's like one problem with your carnal mind. Is that uh, we're told in several places in scripture, God is not a respecter of persons or God is not partial. Right. Exactly. So. People will teach, try to teach all kinds of stuff. And you just got to look at these guys for what they are and be like, listen to their words because they're daggers, right? They're, they're, their tongues are weapons. So you got to look at it for what it is, guys. All right, I'm going to let it go at that. Uh, praise my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Look, um, there's one God, God's a spirit, and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. Now, God, who's a spirit, his name is Jesus. And then there's the mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. He's not God. He's the mediator between God and man. The man, the mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus died for our sins. He was buried. He rose again the third day. God, who's the spirit named Jesus, raised him from the dead. That's why it says it's the spirit that quickened it, that gives life to flesh, brought him nothing. So God raised him from the dead. That's what the Bible clearly says. It says if you believe that gospel, it says you pass from death to life and shall not come into condemnation. So the Bible is explaining to you, like, look, that law just reveals to us that we're all sinners and that we're not going to be justified by the law. Because if you offend one part of the law, you offend all parts of the law. And not only that, when you look up the line of men, up your lineage, your genealogy, well, guess what? Adam sinned. And when Adam and Eve sinned, he said they corrupted themselves, the flesh, and this, their flesh, and all, everything that's in this world. This world is called darkness, and light has no communion with it. The flesh is corrupt, and it says corruption cannot inherit in corruption. Hence, that's why we got to be born again, a new creature. So we got to die to self. And in essence, it's just saying when you believe the gospel, it says you destroy the old man, and you believe uh, the gospel, and you're a new creature created in Christ, sealed and sanctified in God. In him is righteousness and light, and there is no darkness. 
and but his kingdom is not of this world. Hence, that's why it says the children of the flesh cannot inherit the kingdom of God. It says the things which are not seen are eternal. Well, we know that God's eternal. Hence, no man has seen God at any time. His kingdom is eternal. Hence, the kingdom comes out of observation. His sheep have eternal life. He says, I give unto them eternal life. They shall never perish. So you know, you can't tell who's who the children of God are. You don't know where, where they are because they're not of the flesh. Uh, but you do know that the children of the flesh are not children of God because they perish every day. Right? And so you don't count your flesh. That's the old man. That's the outward appearance. You count the new man, which is hidden in God. If it's hidden in God who's invisible, then apparently you can't see and you can't tell. So you have to listen to the words that people speak, okay? Now, again, it's a free gift, not of works as any man should boast. You can't lose your salvation for any reason. People who think they can lose their salvation, it's, it's actually a sense, a way of uh, trying to hide their pride. And what they're saying is, well, there's got to be something that I can offer because if there's nothing, if, if I don't offer something, then I could lose the free gift of eternal life. It's, it's actually just, it's pretending to be humble, but it's actually not humble. It's a pers person who claims they can lose salvation. They're very, very proudful. They're very proudful. They're very, very proudful. Don't don't be fooled by that. They're proudful. If they, like Paul said, he said, Paul said, I know that it in me that is in my flesh dwells no good thing. The sin that dwells in me that is in my flesh dwells no good thing. He talks about, he called himself a chief sinner. These guys don't like that. They say, well, Paul's teaching lawlessness. No, Paul's just teaching that we've all sinned and there's, we're not going to be justified by the law. But these guys, they want to claim they're keeping the law, but they do what? You see them circumventing the law, going to places, doing things secretly, hiding, but yet they impose the law on you. Why do they do that? Because they're using that to obtain and extract more wealth, extortion, and excess. The same guys who rule over you, what do they have? They're rich. They're filthy rich. And so for you to trust that what they're telling you is for your benefit, it makes you foolish to even believe them. It makes you foolish to even believe them. He's like, well, how the person who's rich and so wealthy, they are heaping up on themselves the wealth of this world. That in of itself testifies against them, but yet you're going to believe that they care for you and love you and that they just are looking out for your well-being, knowing how the, the your economics and everything in this world works with regards to solicitation via, via lobbying and all this kind of stuff and extortion and favors. It, it can't be, guys. So they, they're going to appear as angels of light, pretend they're going to, do stuff, but the Bible's got them pegged, got them found out, exposes them and us all, exposes all of us, right? All of us, all of sin. I'm not saying they're worse sinners. I'm just saying that they're all, they're, they're more powerful sinners. Let's put it that way. <laughs> Let's put it that way, okay? All right, so praise my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, King of kings, Lord of lords, amen.